it's woofer cooker here again today i got a new project a 13 or a 314 uh, john deere garden tractor uh, for everyone in my last video i'll make a i'll make a new video about this eventually but have it on the pad made a pad for it still got some work to do though uh, far far from complete it's just sitting there anyways john deere new project runs does drive did not come with a deck uh, it was given to me absolutely free can't ask for more than that um seats absolutely trashed the uh, the two issues that i've noticed right off the bat so far i guess three technically uh number one it does not charge no charging and uh, i think i have it down to this cord here has a fray right here and that was directly on the frame uh pinched between here and there so the wire was basically directly shorted and I'm a little afraid that, uh, you know, who knows how long it was like that. I mean, it, the previous owner who gave it to me basically pulled it from someone's yard and they were just uh, scrapping things. And uh, they asked, like, hey, do you want it? And I'm like, sure, I'll take it. Um, so that being said, we have no idea what the history is of this thing. So as far as I'm aware of, whoever was driving it, it probably wasn't charging. It sat there and just, you know, the magneto probably just sat there and shorted, charging, you know, chargingly shorted into the uh, frame, thus causing obviously no charging of the battery and of course probably killing the magneto too. So I'm gonna find that out. I'm gonna put the multimeter to that and, uh, and see if we get any power out of this guy. If not, then, oh geez, it's gonna be pulling the whole engine out, probably. I don't know anything about these John Deere's, no clue. This is my first time kinda of messing around with them. Uh, I had a John Deere 180 before, but anyone who knows anything about these uh, garden tractors knows that the John Deere 180 and the 312 is two different beasts altogether. Uh, uh, the 180 is also a lot newer as well, and just a lot lower, uh, lower end lower tier to lawn tractor this is a garden tractor so anyways um yeah so i'm going to test that out and see if the magneto is still good or not who knows i'm not sure if i can get to it from the front grill here or if i gotta pull the engine no idea uh but it's kind of you know kind of game over as far as just using it as is because uh, your battery will die pretty quick without a magneto on this thing problem number two problem number two is the um there is a mount right here it's an engine mount i'll focus in that is an engine mount that has separated from the frame there it's actually physically broken i'm gonna try to move that there and hopefully you can see that it's fully cracked off the frame of the mower um, I'm not no welder, and what you know, there's not many welder shops around the county I live at. So I'm either going to just try to jerry rig it with some big washers. Um, I think I'm going to get the washers either way, and then maybe it might be easier to find somebody to weld just a washer. You know, screw the washer down into the bolt, uh, into the engine mount bolt right there, and then put a washer in between that. And then just weld into into that i don't know no clue really don't know um it's not affecting the operation of the engine other than that it vibrates a lot more but this thing is shaft driven and i have a, a, a good suspicion that's the shaft right there going into the hydrostatic transmission back there um there's a really good chance that this thing a lot of the engine's weight is probably on that shaft now basically whatever is not on that anymore is now on that shaft uh which yeah you know the shaft can probably hold it 
But the biggest issue is, is now the weight of the engine is on the carrier bearings or whatever of the, you know, of the engine. And it's not something that you want. So I uh, will have to figure that out eventually before I go using this thing all the time. Um, and then this is a much more smaller, minute thing. Uh, but the, the lever here needs to be adjusted because if it's in neutral, it'll go reverse just a little bit. I mean, not a whole lot, but just enough to where like, you know, trying to work on this thing is a little, is challenging because you, you, it'll start in neutral, of course, but then it'll start wanting to creep back. So kind of funny. Uh, and I guess also the fourth thing is, of course, the seat is absolutely trashed. It's completely gonzo. Um, I mean, the frame is fine, but I don't even know if you can buy these things just the frame. You probably have to get the whole thing uh, off Amazon or whatever. Uh, but uh, And the tires were flat. There was like, two tires that were flat on both opposing sides, and the other two were kind of holding air. So uh, I filled them back up, so it's a hard telling if they'll last. They may, they may not. Um, but hey, I mean, for a free mower, it's hard to hard to say much. Uh, and of course, uh, the backside's absolutely filthy. But as far as the condition goes, I mean, the whole thing's filthy. But as far as condition, as far as like once you once it's cleaned up, I think it's going to clean up pretty well. There's not any. I mean, you know, you got your some classic scar scars here and rust showing through. So I mean, it's not going to be a cream puff once you wash it off. It's still going to definitely have um paint chips and all that stuff but but it's all there i think that's the best part about it is uh, it's all there um and it runs and drives i mean the you know i can't ask for more than that uh, now that being said not only is it missing the deck but it's also missing everything for the deck um so the deck i don't like i said i don't know much about these i had to go on the tractor forms and such there's this guy well, hi, Texas. Yeah. What's up? Good old kitty cat. Anyways, um, there's this guy, and there's that guy over there. A little. I'm not sure if these are the hangers that people were talking about, or if there's uh, another hanger somewhere that I don't know about. I don't know. No, uh, no idea. Just cleaning out the filter. Of course, it was full of uh, rat piss and, and I'm sure and other insulation and everything that mice love to do. So, hard telling. Um, it's all rusted out right here, but it doesn't affect the actual filtration operation because uh, the filter seals around here and then screws. So anyway, well, I'll be back. Uh, we're going to see if maybe just maybe that will uh, that'll fix that um, oil situation or the uh, magneto situation. If I just bypass that wire and go straight to the battery or straight to my multimeter, I should say. So multimeter here, negative lead there. We'll see. Turns out I was wrong about pretty much everything. <laughs> um, so this wire right here actually is for the uh, power takeoff uh, electromagnetic clutch. That's actually what that's for. Nothing to do with um, with the magneto. Didn't know what I was thinking, but I uh, found that out. Doesn't mean I, mean, I still got to fix that though. That's a problem. Uh, the frayed wire there but other than that I think what I got it down to is the uh, bad regulator I haven't checked the ohms I did not ohm out uh, this regulator yet but I think 
that's the problem now. Because uh, according to the forum, there should be about 38 volts AC across this line and that line. And uh, yeah, it's about 40, about 40 volts, give or take. I assume it'd probably drop down a little bit once it, the, you know, the charging circuit actually worked. It'd probably be yeah, about 48 volts. So, um, about 40 right now across these two guys. And then the center lead here, which goes to the battery, it's to this green wire to uh, the key switch. Um, I'm only getting, you know, battery power from that, a non-charging battery power, uh, which is about, you know, 11, 12 volts. So, um, I'm going to either assume that it's two things, either a bad regulator or a bad, um, I can tell someone's been here before and that has been messed with. So it could even possibly be just a bad connector, but I'm gonna ohm that out and that will be the, uh, the sure way of telling that it was wrong with it. So, uh, so yeah, there you go. That's, uh, and then also, one last tidbit, it's amazing how much more you learn when you just pull off the sides. Um, this actually isn't cracked. I originally thought this was cracked here. It's not. It's actually, uh, just a, it's got this ring that wraps around to the other side of it. It's a small, thin ring. And that like grasps, grasps upon the rubber uh, boot here, for the isolator for the motor. And uh, I guess that ring is just broken. You can actually see the broken ring right here. It's, it's just a small little guy. It's pretty thin. I'm surprised that it, it lasted that long. Uh, they got the same situation for the other side here, but that one's still intact. Uh, but you can tell the rubber isolator. Uh, I'm not sure if you can tell that well, but the rubber isolator on that guy is toast. So uh, I don't really think I'm going to care that much about fixing the, uh, the isolators, but I definitely want to be sure to get this metal ring fix i'm sure there's probably a kit or something online um or some sort of way to do that because yeah like i said i don't want the weight of this engine on that shaft so there you go that's what i that's where i'm at right now so you'll have to see a part two video coming out at some point in time part two part three whatever how many parts it'll end up being um I got to go to work so this is what I got so far but uh still a running and driving machine can't ask for more than that